Hi guys, Scott with Houston Event Photography and I'm going to go over some features I found on this Indra 500 TTL Monolite. Yesterday I didn't have the instruction manual and I uh, emailed Phototech and they sent me one and I was really surprised I got it so fast so I've gone over the manual now and I know what all the menus do and how to get to some of the custom features also. So I'm going to start out by showing you the back of the LED on the Indra 500. Uh, we're in menu one. Of course I covered this in another video. Uh, I've got it set up for my Nikon Odin uh, Commander. I'm in TTL mode and down here uh, you can adjust your power settings plus or minus three stops but you can also do that with the commander on the back of the commander uh, this light here turns your modeling light on or off I've caught mine off but uh, I showed this yesterday you can see that the light gets brighter as you turn the little green control knob it is an LED modeling light so it shouldn't drain your battery too bad but if you're not using it I would keep it turned off so I'm going to go ahead and turn mine back off get back to menu one turn this down turn it to off okay the mode again uh, if you're using the uh, Odin commander you'll be shooting TTL this is where you change that you can go into manual and you can adjust your power range up and down. Uh, multi is where your flash will fire multiple times real fast. And you can set how many numbers of flashes you want in burst. This one is set at 40 right now at 100 uh, hertz. And you can change that in, in menu 3 and I'll show you that in a minute. I didn't have that information yesterday. We'll go back to menu one. Now we'll go to menu two. And on menu two is where you 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 pretty much set what channel you're going to be on, what groups you're going to be on, and then this third button. I didn't know what this was yesterday, but up here it says color setting. It says classic, dynamic, and elegance. And I don't know if you can see that very well on the video. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. So you can see it a little better today. And this button that has that, I thought it had something to do with the uh, color temperature of the light. Uh, maybe you could change it, but that's not what it is. Really what it, what it does and all that it does is it changes the way the LED menu looks. That's classic, just black and white. Uh, and if you go to change a group or something, it turns from black and white to orange. The dynamic was how it came out of the box when I purchased it, and that's green. And when you go to change something, it turns white. And then the elegance, when you select that one, it turns to a blue looking color and anything you change turns changes to red I'm gonna change this back to dynamic that's where it came from the factory and I kinda like that um, but you can change the color and that's all that it does it doesn't have anything to do with the white balance of your of your light the Kelvin temperature all right, if we go to menu three, I left it set in multi when I was in, in the menu a while ago in, in uh, menu one so that I could show you this. And now you can see it says number in hertz. If I hit number, you'll notice over here, this is how many times it's going to strobo flash when you're in that multi mode. 40. It gives you a number. There's different numbers. And then Hertz, you can go from 100 Hertz 
down to zero or one hertz. So that's what that little button does. I I can't recall the last time I ever used a multi flash like that. So, but some people may, and that's where you find it at. All right, the fourth menu. Uh, this is where you decide what commander you're going to use if you're using this flash in TTL, Odin N, a Strato 2, the Optical Slave. You can turn it completely off where uh, it won't receive any kind of signal. Uh, in that case, you probably have to have a pocket wizard or some kind of uh, sync cord hooked up to your camera to make it flash. Um, and then Odin C was for the can was for Canon cameras. Uh, right now, I don't think they support Sony's. I've heard people ask about it. It may be something they they can add to it uh, by firmware because this light is firmware upgradable. It has a port where you can plug it in and, and upgrade the firmware. All right, and then all those menus. Uh, this little menu, this little item icon right here. I didn't know what it did and what that does when you have it set and I don't know if you can see it very well but it's a it's a square box with some little other little square boxes around it that sets your flash to where it will flash without being fully charged if you were shooting real fast and your flash didn't have time to recover it would still put out whatever power it had built up in the capacitor so you could at least have some flash I'm gonna turn that back off I don't use that I don't shoot that fast. And we'll go back to menu one. And it's it's up in TTL mode again. And I'm gonna go back to menu four and change my um, camera back to a Nikon. And I'm gonna take it out of multi mode, put it back in TTL. And then there is a custom menu that's hidden and you have to hold this menu button and this green button down for three seconds and it'll go into this custom menu and this custom function number one give me one second is for uh, it's for an adjustment for color temperature I think is what, it, what I read and then it is enable and disable uh, this one right here, uh, custom function number one, that other one was custom function number zero. I, I read it wrong. Custom function number one, it lets you adjust how much power goes out when you hit the test button. And it's set at one thirty second power. You can put it at full. I'm going to leave that there. Uh, custom function number two is uh, the recycle time, the, the beep that you hear. Uh, when your flash fully gets back up to a full power, it'll beep, and you can disable that beep if you like. I'll leave it on on mine. And then the last one is for the fan. I spoke yesterday that when you start shooting with this thing, the fan does seem to come on pretty quick, and uh, <coughs> you can set the temperature at what where you want the fan to start coming back on in this menu. And then just hit that button and you get out of it. And I'm going to test fire. Let me turn this, this on. I'm going to test fire this flash a few times. And I only fired it one time and the fan cut on. You might see if you can hear it. It's kind of loud. The fan's kind of loud on this thing. Um. And I wouldn't think that the fan would cut on that quick with just me firing one test flash. Uh, but it does. And then after a while, it'll cut off and you can fire it several times and it won't ever come on. So uh, that may be something that they need to fix in firmware. I wouldn't think that it needs to kick the fan on when you first start up the flash. Anyway, that's the whole menu system now. Um, the little book they sent me a PDF file. If anybody wants it, y'all can email me. 
Uh, my email is info at HoustonEventPhotography.com. I'll be glad to send it to you. It's not on their website anywhere. They had to mail it to me or email it to me. So if you're buying one of these or you're considering buying one, uh, I'll be glad to send that to you. Anyway, everybody have a great day. I'm going to be out playing with this thing in a while and take some uh, real pictures with it.